Good morning guys, welcome to Monday's FRT Gold Live video. Hope you're all doing well and had a good weekend. Um, a really good weekend with Township Racing. It was some excellent action taking place. Of course, the St. Ledger, the, the final classic of the year, which came from Doncaster and it was a superb race taken by the favourite Kingston Hill with our selection, Romstar, running a really, really credible, creditable race went in second, an excellent race there. Also Irish Champions weekend from Leopardstown on the Saturday and then the Curra on the Sunday. And was a, a really, really good weekend from there. Plenty for us to, to look at. Um, a good day for us as well yesterday. We'll go through that in just a second. Before we get underway though, just a reminder, this is a live Q&A session. If you did want to join in that, you can um, do so quite easily by just joining in this Q&A session and asking any questions you've got, perhaps about the weekend just gone, the week ahead, or even today's selection. Or if you uh, if maybe you're not watching this video live or you can't join in that Q&A session, remember you can always email joe at freeracingtips.co.uk. You can get in touch via Twitter. We're at freeracingtips7. And then it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash FRT goal. So plenty of ways for you to get in touch. Please do feel free to do so. So... Yeah, we'll start off by looking at how we got on yesterday, and really good day for us yesterday, actually. It was um, three winners from the four selections. This included an 11-8 to 8 premium tip, which um, was recommended at four points. The next best bet couldn't quite do the business, so we did lose three points on that one, but we did have the one-point singles at 4-1 to one and 2-1 two to one do the business, meaning that the day was around about eight points in profit in the end, so a really good one there, and uh, it rounded off what was eventually a, a profitable premium a profitable um, weekend of racing for us and and uh, we seem to be in some decent form at the moment delivering plenty of profit. The premium tips have been really good so far this month as well so hopefully that can, can continue today. Today it's it's not great racing to be honest. I'm I'm really dis not disappointed but it's just not racing that inspires me whatsoever to be honest. Um, and uh, I think sometimes you just need to you just need to accept that it's not great racing. There's not many horses that can really take your eye. And today there's just one selection, uh, just the premium tip, which is a four point bet. But that's the only tip today. Of course, um, I went through every single race and really looked into it. But you know, when those horses aren't jumping out at you and they don't tick the boxes, I think it wouldn't be fair on you guys for me to recommend horses that I think have a, have a decent chance but not the sort of chance I want when tipping them so that's why we're just going with the one selection just the premium tip today and hopefully it proves to be a, a good decision and we can deliver some, some really good profits on this one so racing in total does it goes from Musselburgh, Brighton, Wolves and Listool today and um, that's over in Ireland and we are actually heading over to Ireland for our premium tip for the day it goes in the 405 there at Listool and it's um Rule the Waves currently at seven to four. Sorry, was at seven to four. Now is has been backed into eleven to eight. Now this horse was a really impressive winner at Kilbegan last time out, and I think could still have a fair bit of improving to do. Has got off in the handicap for that race as you'd expect, but um, was actually carrying a bit of a mammoth weight on that day as well, and his top weight again today. And, and I don't think that will be a problem. That the uh, the only problem you could say would be that this is a step up in class, of course. But it's not as if the horse was carrying eight stone twelve and is now carrying nine stone seven. It was carrying actually a little bit more than that last time. So I think that's always quite a a thing and uh, quite a, a positive thing. And then also. It might be a step up in class, but I think the horse has still got a lot of improving to do. The Ballydore team, um, Aidan O'Brien and Joseph O'Brien, they have an excellent uh, record in this race to the Ballydore team, and I think that counts for plenty as well. They'll be looking for, for a decent day as well after some big, big disappointments for them during the weekend. And um, I just think that this horse could be the class act in the race, and it's the only one today that really stood out for me and really did tick those box, tick most of the boxes that I wanted ticking, and um, that's why I'm just going with that tip for today. It's a four-point win-only bet once again, and as I said, that's in the 4 or 5 at this stool, and it's ruled the waves at 11th weight from 7 to 4 this morning. So that's the only selection for today, so not much for us to go through there. If you've got any selections or anything like that for today, please do feel free to get in touch, and uh, we'll see how you get on. But, yeah, that's just about it for me today. So what that gives us a chance to do in this video, I know it's not going to be the longest of ones, but just a bit of a chance to reflect on the weekend just gone. We don't usually get the chance 
to do that. So I think that could be quite good. And it was a, a story of beaten favourites for me at the weekend. I know I mentioned Kingston Hill, Wallace and Ledger. That was, of course, the big race of the of the weekend. So we will talk about that one, but then we'll get to the to the beaten favourite um, story. So excellent race, St. Ledger. Um, Kingston Hill came pretty much last to first. I thought, uh, you know, maybe two furlongs out that Bromstall looked the most likely winner, and it was all about how Kingston Hill would quicken up on that faster ground, but no problem whatsoever. And, and, um, if the signs were there, I mean, the horse um, did touch around about seven to two at one point during the day, but I think it was back into nine to four. And you can't deny that the, that the horse after that Derby run did deserve um, to take a take a classic and uh, yeah, excellent run from from that one, and perhaps even a, a big contender for the arc, to be honest. Um, especially if it, does, if it does go a little bit soft, because I don't think there's anything any doubt that. Um, I don't think there's any doubt that this horse does prefer that softer ground, to, and you do wonder just how far he might have won by if it was a, a testing surface. But he's shown as well that he does go on that quick ground and, and beat, albeit what well, wasn't the best of St. Ledger, St. Ledger meetings in terms of the quality, um, did still quicken up nicely and won with perhaps a little bit in hand, to be honest. And uh, yeah, could be a big player for the arc, actually. And that arc market has been, has been blown wide open with what happened at the weekend. Australia, who may or may not head for the arc, is probably unlikely, to be honest. I think uh, perhaps Champions Day at Ascot is more likely, but Australia, priced at 1-3 to three for the Irish Champions Stakes, beaten by the Grey Gatsby. I mean, what a superb race that was to watch. I think you could give a little bit of the blame to Joseph O'Brien. I think he has admitted that he was a bit at fault and didn't give the horse the best of rides. Perhaps it was just a bit too far back, but also it's the brilliance of Ryan Moore once again. Ryan Moore... Um, showing why he's, he's so in demand and is, for me, the best jockey in the world. He gave the great Gatsby an excellent ride. Of course, he had the horse underneath him as well. But, uh, you know, I don't think there's any doubt, really. Even a furlong, two furlongs out, you just always felt that the great but Gatsby was going to get there. And in the end, Moore judged that perfect time to get in front. And the great Gatsby got a, a deserved victory. You can't deny it. Just quite simply, the better horse on the day, I would say. But, you know, if they were to go up again, you'd fancy Australians to do the business. But... Yeah, that, um, I would imagine that messed up a few accumulators for the day, to be honest, that Australia. I think that was put in there as your banker. Also, on Sunday, Trev was beaten and not beaten by, you know, a short head or anything like that. It was fourth and never really got into the race. And you just wonder whether this horse at um, four years old is is anywhere near as strong as she was as a three-year-old last year when storming that arc field. Um when, when winning that comfortably, I just don't think she looks like the same horse, to be honest. She was beaten and is now up to about 10 to 1, I think, for the uh, for the arc, which some people might like to have a little bet on, but I don't think this horse is showing enough to, to prove that uh, she can win the arc. So that means that, as I said, that arc feels wide open with the likes of De Gruder and See the Moon also being beaten recently, as well as... Um, as tapestry as well during the weekend. I think there's just there's so many question marks over that, and I think it's going to be a fascinating market to watch and a really really interesting race. I think it could be one of the most wide open. You're going to be looking at perhaps six to one for about four of them or five of them. It could be so could be plenty of value out there. But uh, yeah, that's the arc field really starting to uh, to liven up a bit there with so many of these leading contenders being beaten, and you just wonder if they can bounce back at Longchamp in just a few weeks' time. Also leading light in the Irish and Ledger, another beaten favourite at around about 9 to 10. Again, perhaps not the best of rides from Joseph O'Brien, but I think a few jockeys were left with egg on their faces, to be honest. And um, excellent, excellent ride from Richard Kingsgo on Brown Panther. He went from the front, and I know some people say it was an obvious thing to do on the Proven Stay, but leading light to Proven Stay, he beat Brown Panther in the in the um, Ascot Gold Cup. So I don't see why people would say that Brown Panther would be the only one to do that. Um, with a being a proven stayer, there was a few of these that were were proven stayers. So why didn't Leading Light go from the front? I don't know. But uh, Kingsgo just always sensed that um, you know he should be a bit further ahead than the rest, and just chose when to kick on. And in the end, it was a complete one horse race. Brown Pound for absolutely blitzed them, and and again a few accumulators going down the straight, and a few uh, a few pounds going down the straight as well with um, Leading Light failing to win that one. So a really really good weekend, as I said, a story of. Of beating favourites, and actually, we didn't. We gave Rob Stull, who finished second in the St. Ledger. I don't think um, we could have too many complaints with that. I think the horse ran an excellent race, but just bumped into one that was a little bit too good. But then I was glad that we didn't, you know, put Australia in an accumulator or tip leading light or anything like that. Always looked too short in the market, and 
um, just didn't look like like good bets. But yeah, that was the weekend. Hopefully you enjoyed that that little recap of the weekend. As I said, not often we get a chance to do that. That's just about it for today's video, to be honest. Any questions throughout the day, please do feel free to get in touch. But there's going to be, um, it's not the best of racing today, as I said, but there is still that one tip there from us, and hopefully we can deliver what will be around about seven points in profit um, if we do get this one winner with the uh, with Rule the Waves in that race at this stall. But any questions throughout the day, please do feel free to get in touch. Thanks for watching today's video. There'll be one once again tomorrow where I'm sure things will be a little bit busier. Thank you, and bye-bye.